unto them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. He did this for me. I said he did this for me. Thank you, Jesus. Went through all that pain. He went through it for me. The agony that he endured, he endured it for me. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, they spit on it. Hallelujah. And he took it for me. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. They whooped him. Yes, yes. And he took it for me. Yes, yes. Come on. The Bible says after he had scourged Jesus. And without going into full detail, what they used to scorch him was not merely a leather belt. But what they used would actually rip flesh and he took it. Yes, sir. For me. He was led to Calvary like a sheep that is led to the slaughter and he went there. For me. He hung his head, bled and died and he did this. For me. Because we're the same. But when I 
peace in us. See his love in us. Hear his songs in us. See his praise in us. See his worship in us. Acknowledge his God in us. See there is something different about that brother. And it begins to allow me to try to take a sneak peek into his life. But because I can't see Jesus unless I see him, he has to be the ambassador of Christ to me. So part of me, what I do is I reevaluate myself and I try to learn something about God that I didn't know before. And in learning about God, hallelujah, I begin to see the love that he has for his people. Even so much so that when we begin to take a stand, even as Daniel did, we begin to realize that this man or these children have found favor. And hallelujah, the test doesn't stop right there. Hallelujah, because I found that even after two, over 20 years of being saved, it seems like now I'm really starting to fight. <laughs> Hallelujah, it's like even when you come up to preach, it's like the bell ringing. The preacher won't tell you this. And it's like the bell rings, and it's like we're like a boxer coming out <laughs> to the ring. And we hear the father saying, go get him. Hallelujah, and he's not saying go get you. He's talking about going to get the opponent, which is the adversary, which is the devil. Hallelujah, so we come out, we're ready for the fight. The bell rings, we go back to our corner, we get some coaches, we got the cut king there, we got someone to massage, we got someone to give us water, somebody got the sponge, they take out the rockets, they sponge us down, and then the bell rings and they say, go get him. So we come back out again, we fight, we use the word, we wrestle in the spirit, and we try to get the devil, and then the bell rings, and then we go back to our side. Then we sit down, and they give us some more words and encouragement, and say, now what you got to do, you got to do this, tuck your head, move to the side, use the word, God, come out this scripture, go that way. So we go back out of the bell rings, and we go get him. Blessing. But I 
But when we look at the book of Luke, the third chapter, the Bible tells me that Mary and Joseph had packed up their stuff to leave Jerusalem. And on their trip of leaving, they were three days into their journey when they found out that Jesus wasn't in the company. And that's a bad thing to be on your way. And Jesus is nowhere to be found. He was just a little boy. Jesus, where you at? Jesus, we can't find you. The Bible says that after three days, they found the boy Jesus in the temple, hallelujah, teaching and asking questions. Mary came to him, all powerful and all broke up because she couldn't find her baby. Lord have mercy. If there was an Amber alert at that time, they would have put one out on Jesus. But some of us need to put an Amber alert out on Jesus because we can't find him.
Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Jesus died to give life. Not just a shout, not just a dance. That's in it. And it's good. But God want to see some babies. Yes, Lord. Yeah. I hope you hear the church compared to a hospital. We can come and get treatment for your ailments. Hallelujah. But there's a particular floor in every hospital. Hallelujah. That we don't talk about much in a church. Hallelujah. Yeah, we talk about the emergency room. Yeah, we talk about the surgery room. But what about the maternity room? This God having some babies in the church. of who, uh, who don't know anything about the good news, allow me to tell you about the good news. The good news, the good news is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's basically the fact that he was born, he died, and he rose again. He came to this earth to save us from our sins because we couldn't do it ourselves. He then took up the cross and was crucified and died in our stead so that we, us sinners, and all those who used to be sinners, could have the right to live in God's kingdom. So the gospel is basically the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He rose again to, to save our souls from the gates of hell. And for all those who believe in him, that is in his son, Jesus Christ, that you shall gain eternal life. For the Bible says, Acts 2, 28, it says for us to be baptized. First, we have to repent from our sins because we were all born into sin. And it's not our fault. It's just that that's how it was from the get-go, Adam and Eve. So because of their sin, we all, every human, every mankind was born into sin. Now, God tried to want, wanted to, and he did redeem us again by coming down here himself in the form of a man, which is Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, because he tried everything, but he finally said, you know what? If you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. So he came down in the form of man, in the form of Jesus Christ, to bear our sins, to bear our burdens. And even still right now, although he's up in heaven, he did leave us uh, the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, which will teach and guide us into all the truth that God needs for us to know. And even if you don't know nothing about the Bible, even if you don't know anything, I would suggest that stop, don't listen to people. Pick up that Bible yourself, open it up, and read something for yourself. And I guarantee you, God will give you enough faith to make the next step. He will talk to you. If you truly want to seek Him for you, from your whole heart, just pick up that Bible, pick up the scripture. I mean, you read anything, but read Acts 2.38 and read the whole book of Acts, as a matter of fact. And God would talk to you. He would talk to the spirit that's within you. Not his spirit just yet, but he will talk to you, your, your spirit. He knows. God knows everything that we need before we even ask. 
So I suggest that you just pick up the Bible, look at it, read it, and learn it for yourself. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to the preacher here and the preacher there. Just pick it up and read it for yourself. And I guarantee you, God will talk to you. He will talk to you. You know, some people ask me, man, um, how do you do it? You know, this, that, and the other. You know, uh, the sinful, how do I not do the sinful things that I am capable of doing? And I just simply tell a man, it's not me, it's the spirit. It's the spirit that gives me strength to live the life that I need to live for Christ. It's his spirit, it's his Holy Spirit. And he will give it to you. I know people try, they try, they try. You can try as much as you want to. Try to stop smoking, stop drinking. You can stop having sex. You could try, you could try and do all that, but I guarantee you, 99% out of the time, it won't happen. You will not succeed because it's your human nature. It's our human nature to do the things that, uh, that seems natural. But when God comes and gives you the supernatural, then that's when you can say, I've won. I've defeated, I've defeated drugs, I defeated, um, smoking, I defeated you know, foul language, I defeated any of the sins that we were born into. I mean, it's natural again, it's natural for a sinner to sin. I mean, I'm not your judge, don't get me wrong. I ain't got the time to be a judge, but I'm just gonna state a couple, two facts. One, God's word is true, if you read it. And number two, I'm a witness of the life that God said I can have if I do the things that the Bible says. I am a witness. And I live, I'm living that life now. I live it now. Uh, it can be hard, but with Jesus Christ, I got the victory. And you can too. God bless you. Thanks for listening to my little giddy up out of the spirit of the moment. But I just felt the urge to, you know, say a little something, something. All right, for Jesus. God bless you all. Don't forget, search God's word for yourself. Find a good church. Make it happen for your life. Because God can give you the promise now on this earth, and he can give you the promise of eternity. Amen. Amen. Peace of God.